Hi everybody and welcome to Exotic Zoo TV. I'm Scott and I'm here to record the first ever episode of Exotic Zoo TV. So whether you're at home being homeschooled and you want to learn some new things or maybe you're just at home and you want to know what is going on at Exotic Zoo, today we're going to be meeting some really special animals that live here. We're going to be meeting a group of animals sometimes known as mini beasts. Now mini beasts are a group of animals with no backbone sometimes more scientifically known as invertebrates. So today we're going to meet some invertebrates that live at Exotic Zoo and we're going to find out about the mini groups that they're put into. Enjoy! So the first animal that we're going to get to meet today, we've really had to shell out for to get on the show. We're going to meet Brian, the giant African land snail. Now, the group that Brian belongs to, the mini beast, the invertebrate group that he belongs to is a group called mollusk. Now, a mollusk is um, a mini beast that has no legs and has a soft, unsegmented body. Now, why is it important that I said unsegmented body? Because there's another group of mini beasts with a soft body and no legs called annelids. Now, an annelid is a mini beast like a worm. Annelids have segments around their body, rings around their body, and that's what differentiates them to a mollusk that has no segments. So there's no segments on Brian's body. So we might find a snail or a slug even, okay? They are also a mollusk. So a mollusk doesn't have to have a shell like Brian because of course slugs, they don't have a shell at all. So what is special about Brian? Well, first of all, he is a giant snail. So you're not gonna find one of these in your garden. You can see him, he's as big as my head, okay? If you step on one of these outside your front door, you're not gonna squish his shell, you're gonna slip over on him because he has got a gigantic rock hard shell to protect him from danger. So where do we find him? Well, as he's called a giant African land snail, you've probably already guessed, we can find him in the rainforests of Africa. So he lives in the rainforest where it's hot, humid, and he gets a nice warm environment all year round, so he's always out eating lots and lots of food, so he can grow to be such a big snail. Now, what does he like to eat? Well, he is a herbivore, so herbivores like to eat plant matter, so he makes his way around the rainforest eating all of the plants. But how does he eat them? Well, he doesn't suck them till they've digested. Believe it or not, even though he's got no bones, he's got a soft body, he has got a mouth full of teeth. In fact, his tongue and his throat is covered in thousands of tiny little teeth. We call it his radula, and they help him to break up the leaves as he eats them. It's not the only thing that he has to eat though, because this shell here is made out of calcium. It's rock hard, it's heavy, and it helps to protect him from danger. And this tiny little tip here was the tip of his shell that he was born with. And as he grows, his shell grows too. And this little edge around by his head is constantly growing. So what does he have to eat to be able to help support that? Well, he does sometimes eat bones as well to get the calcium from bones. So don't be surprised if you find a snail eating on some bones of a dead animal because he's just trying to get some extra calcium for that shell. Now you might see today Brian's being very well behaved and very brave because he could be hiding in his shell if he was scared, but he's not. He's sticking his big long body out, he's being very brave. He's not hiding inside today. So you quite lucky, you can see his eyes on top of his head, but also because it's usually quite dark where Brian is, okay, he might come out at night time. He's also got his tentacles on the bottom of his face here that he's using to feel his way around and find his food and find his way around. So our first animal, our first group of mini beasts, a mollusk, a snail, a slug, a soft bodied mini beast with no segments at all, not like a wiggly worm. What group are they from? Annelids, that's right. Okay, let's meet our next animal. So we met our first mini beast, we met a mollusk which had no legs at all. So if we're thinking about legs on mini beasts, well what comes after no legs? Two legs? No. Do we get mini beasts with four legs? Mm, no. So the next amount of legs is six legs, so we're talking about the biggest group of mini beasts, and these are called insects. You've heard of insects, right? So let's get out and let's see if we can find ourselves some insects. If you get on the ground and have a look around, even in your back garden, the chances are you might be able to find an insect. And that's because insects are the biggest group of animals in the world. They think that there's probably over a million kinds of insects, and that makes up about 80% of all the animals in the world. Just like 
this Madagascan hissing cockroach that I found. Oh, yes! So, here we've got a new guinea stick insect. But what makes an insect fit into its group? Well, first of all, they have six jointed legs. All insects have six legs. You've got three parts of their body, so they have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. They've got a pair of antennae on the top, which is really important to help them to find their way around and discover the world around them. And they have a hard exoskeleton that covers their body really, really hard for this stick insect. And the great thing about this um, stick insect, having an exoskeleton is as he grows, if he loses parts of his body, when he sheds his exoskeleton to get bigger, if he's lost something like a leg in the wall, well, he can regrow a brand new leg back. So I think that's, I think that's pretty amazing. I love insects. So after our group of insects, we're going to move on to the next set of legs, which is eight legs, and that is our group of arachnids. So in this group, we've got spiders, scorpions, we've got ticks and mites. And this time, instead of having three parts to the body, we've got two parts to the body. We've got a cephalothorax and an abdomen. So we're going to have a little look to see if we can find one of my favourite type of arachnids. We've got a tarantula. Oh, here she is. Okay. So this is a Mexican red knee tarantula. So we see she's got eight jointed legs. She's got a hard exoskeleton. She's got her two body parts. On the top, she's actually got eight eyes as well, which is pretty cool. Um, and on her abdomen, she's actually got some irritating hairs. She can flick to defend herself from danger as well. So pretty awesome. And then tucked away at the front, probably the bit that people are most scared of with the tarantulas and spiders, is she's got her two sharp, shiny fangs, which she uses to, of course, inject venom into the animals she wants to eat for a dinner. And now and again, she might even use it to protect herself as well. Same again, just like with um, some of our other um, invertebrates, she can shed her skin. So I've actually found close by a skin that she must have shed recently. So this, believe it or not, even though it looks just like her, this is just a skin that she's crawled out of to help her to grow. And same again, if she loses a body part, underneath she can have grown a brand new body part. So just like all creepy crawlies, just like all our mini bees, I think arachnids are awesome. <laughs> So you're gonna to have to really dig through the leaf litter or even lift a log or two to find our last group of mini beasts. And the last group of mini beasts that we're gonna to meet today is a group called myriad pods. Now myriad pods are the group of mini beasts with the most legs um, and they include mini beasts like Millie the millipede who we're gonna to get to meet today. Millie's a giant African millipede. We get millipedes and also centipedes. Now they have extra long bodies, they have hard segmented exoskeletons and they usually have one pair or two pairs of legs per segment. Millie the millipede is um, a detritivore. Now that means that her diet consists of dead and decaying plant mass. So she's nice and friendly and quite easy and safe for me to hold today. But if she was the other myriapod, the centipede, well, they are totally different. Centipedes are carnivores. They have sharp fangs like a tarantula, and they eat other animals for their dinner. Now, if you go out into your garden and lift up a log or a stone, you might be able to actually find a myriapod yourself. Now, if you find one, an extra long little animal that runs away from you really fast and you found a centipede because they're carnivores, they move super fast. If you find one that curls up in a hard ball, it's been quite shy and trying to hide from you, then you've found a millipede. Millie's got a pair of antennas at the front here that she's using her antenna to find her way around. So she doesn't have eyes to see so much. She can just see light and dark. And what she does in the jungle, her special job is that she eats all of the leaf litter and the plants that have decayed on the forest floor. She keeps the jungle nice and clean. But then when she goes to the toilet, well, she's digested all that plant matter and turned it into a poo that's a bit like soil with lots of nutrients in. So it helps the new plants and trees to grow in the rainforest. So just like it's really good for us to recycle to help to keep the planet healthy, well, millipedes have been doing it for millions of years. I think myriapods are pretty cool. Well, this is the end of our very first ever Exotic Zoo TV episode. 
I hope you've all enjoyed meeting some of the mini beasts that live right here at Exotic Zoo and hopefully you've learned some new things to maybe help you at homeschooling or if you've just come along to see what we're doing, hopefully you've enjoyed meeting some of the animals that live here. If you've got any other ideas for other shows that we might be able to make for you then get in touch and let us know. See you all soon.